Before we miss and Lisa Sauer and Deb. Deb made it, but I'm not seeing a microphone on her feed. So, oh, there she goes. There she's got one. You're on, Deb. You're just muted. Hello? There you are. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to give the reins over to the planning board. Um, I've got an American flag that I can present when you want to do the pledge. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's your meeting, and I will be happy to participate. But go ahead, and whoever wants to, Deb, if you want to run it, if you're not OK. You know, I, is there, do you know where the volume thing is up so I can turn this up so I can hear? Um, I always just use the volume on my device. I don't have a separate. Zoom. Now I'm on a laptop. I have I never used it before. So down in the right hand corner, Deb, do you have like what looks like in the bottom bar on the right hand side, a little thing that looks like a speaker? I don't know if that's it. If you click no, on that, that's... can you? No. No, I'm looking. Or it's on the know. top row. It might be in the top row, and it looks like a megaphone or something. Yeah, mine just happens to be on the bottom. But yeah, it could be other places. Um, oh, wait. Wait. Is that it? Hello? Someone say something. Hello? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Maybe that's better. Okay. All right. So are we all here? And we're waiting at Lisa. I just texted her. Um, we're just missing she, Lisa Sauer. Yeah, oh. she knows. She knows about. It. I just texted her. We'll see what oh. she said. Oops. Oy. Well, the meeting is recorded, and we'll go up on YouTube, so she can't make it. Okay. Um, okay, we can just. All right. Well, you want to go ahead and um. Well, we could start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Here comes Lisa. <laughs> Oh, okay. I think. Wait. No. Okay, go ahead. All right. We're all standing. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, how pretty is that? <laughs> all right. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag. United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands. Which stands. stands. One nation, One nation. nation. under God, indivisible, indivisible. With liberty, liberty and justice and for all. Okay. Whoops. Did everybody get the um the minutes? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or anything on them? No. 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 Okay. I'll move to approve. I'll second. What was that? What? It was Bill Foos. I said I'd move to approve. Okay. Oh, and Lisa, second. you seconded. I did. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um. Then there. Um. Rob, I didn't ever hear from Matt, so I'm assuming there's nothing else on the agenda. So it's just I think that we all have questions as far as what we should be doing with our sections. Um. Of the. Um with the the um the zoning the yeah. zoning stuff we're supposed to be working on sorry i opened this morning before you, before you move on you got to take a vote oh a vote for approving the minutes oh. oh i'm sorry 
I'm sorry that we seconded forget. So I'll, 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 ugh. I'm sorry. I woke up. I got up too early this morning. <laughs> All right. Everyone's okay with the minutes. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. We're all, we're all yes. Okay. So, okay. Um, do you want me to kick off the, the zoning ordinance? Yeah, because I think you're the one that's going to be answering everyone's questions. So, so I think we're all broken up into groups um, based on yep. the land use section. And Liz went through and did some work on the definitions. Obviously, different definitions are going to be more or less relevant depending on your land use designation. Um, I think definitions, you know, we'd hashed out a bunch of definitions, but there's still some missing that Liz pointed out. Thank you very, very much for that work, Liz. That is, that is very helpful. Um, but my strategy um, that works for me, and I'm just going to throw it out there and open it for discussion is that you know we started as a group for the last two years talking about the the permitted uses and the special uses because that really informs the more specific aspects of each use in the town um, so we more or less have those hammered out but of course there could always be new details that crop up and so what i would suggest for each group is read through your area in the in the zoning ordinance. So look at any of the specific um, wording for your land use, but it's it's predominantly just the uses and the permitted uses, and then the definitions that relate to those. And then from there, what you're going to want to do is is check out the various segments that we have the special chapter and you know we all remember recently looking into section 612 which laid out the specific details about all-terrain vehicles snowmobiles go-karts motorcycles and motor vehicle racetracks and courses so that specific use is probably going to involve much more effort in understanding, refining, doing whatever it is that, that we think we need to do with it. So um, that's really where the meat of what it is that we need to tackle right now is. So if you have in your land use designation, um, a use that is specifically talked about like a skilled trade shop, light industrial uses, um, we have a huge section on commercial communication towers. I'm not sure how much of that needs to change, if anything, but you know it it bears looking at home occupation. So, so Rob, question question on that. Sorry, communication towers. Yep, we have one. Yes, there were reasons on why we have it, but do we write this to grandfather what we already have? Or do we write this in terms of what we want to see in the future? We write it for because what we, we may not want another thousand foot uh, communications tower in the future, but we have the one we have. Yeah, I would completely agree with that statement. I wasn't real fond of the one that we, we got, but it's here and it's been a tax earner for us. And it's what it is. Um, right. I would say that Anything that we're writing is for the future. Anything that already exists is grandfathered in, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. Right. So anything that is written or changed now is not going to change something that's already existing. Um, what we need to be cognizant of are any changes that could be made that are going to change the potential for what people can do. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't change any of that stuff. I'm just saying we need to make special note of, are we adding or removing a potential use in an area? Um, it's gonna be one that we you know, really need to put our thinking caps on and, and look at very closely. But as far as 
if, if something changed about the communication towers, it would not affect the existing communication. Mm -hmm. um, so, sorry, my binder's falling off the table here. Um, and once you have a look at the specific sections that are existing um, that pertain to your area, I would then suggest that you look through the uses and try to determine if any of the uses merit having a separate area. Like, is there a, is, if there's a lot of technical aspects of what works, what doesn't work, or context within a use, then that would merit coming up with a new section to explain that use. And, and if you find something like that, what I would do is just brainstorm out ideas. And it doesn't have to be wordy. It doesn't have to be legalese. Just, you know, in the Hamlet commercial area, for example, uh, if you were going to have a wholesale or wait, wholesale trade was going to be in uh, industrial commercial. I don't know. One of those ones that we, we hashed out for a long time when we were talking about. Um, talking about the specifics of how would it fit in this area, that's probably going to be a use that's going to need a more detailed section. And, and so I would make note of those, you know, if the definition is not sufficient to encapsulate exactly what the town is going for with that use, then we're gonna want a section on it that explains it in further detail. Um, I, I think that the the two most involved will likely be the rural agriculture because that's going to have mm -hmm. the biggest mix of things um, because it's kind of the catch-all for the whole town, and and you know we want to be very cognizant about what we're allowing and why and what the parameters are, um, and then the industrial commercial section is going to be you know, more technical because of the nature of the, the uses that, that we have there. Um, and then not to get the cart ahead of the horse, but once, we, once we've gone that far with it, um, I think that there's a couple of aspects that we really need to think about. One, um, looking at our solar again, the whole landscape of solar energy has changed since we passed our solar ordinance in 2016 or 2017. Uh, so there's some new strategies. As you probably know, the governor and the state have decided that when they do an Article 10 that they've basically taken away all local authority. And it's very up in the air. Nothing's been really vetted through the judicial system. Um, what the state can get away with, what the companies can get away with, and what the localities can get away with. So it's really the wild west. And mm -hmm. one of the strategies that I have heard used is to define specific areas, zoning areas in your town that you could support a large scale solar. So, you know, our ordinance is built for a 10 to 15 acre solar. Um, and they can basically come in and put a thousand acre solar in anywhere and there's not really anything we can do about it. So it is mm -hmm. used that if we set up a couple of parcels where we said, you know, this could accommodate a 500 acre solar, you might have a better chance of keeping it in that area rather than having it spread out all over town, like what they're proposing to do in Byron. Mm -hmm. But nobody knows because it hasn't been hasn't gone through the judicial system yet. So I, I think we should we should tackle that after we've you know got our existing uses done. But everything that that we do at this stage really should should be um, a continuation of branching off from the, the permitted uses that that we've come up with as a group. Does anybody have any Rob, you just went mute. Sorry, well, I just went mute because I I ran out of things to say. <laughs> no, your lips were still moving though. <laughs> oh, sorry. Does anybody have uh, 
thoughts, comments, questions, strategies that are different or a way that you might want to go about it differently than what I've laid out, because that's really just the way my brain thinks about it. I don't want to try to tell you all what to do if you have a different way of wanting to tackle things. I'm wondering if <clears throat> at one point we could just take one segment and use it as an example of how you would want to go about it. In other words, take a sentence out of one of the zoning lines uh, sentences and you say, okay, within this sentence, there is a definition that needs to be on the books. Uh, one other thing as an aside, when I went through this, we have a couple of places where it said one family dwelling, then it said one family or single family or two families. I think we need to be very specific about, and there is no definition in there about single dwelling, multi-dwelling, there's nothing in there about it. And I think we should eliminate the word one dwelling because, or one family rather, because uh, you know, one family could be everybody's cousin. <laughs> um, I think an example, if we just had an example of how to go about it, then we can go back to our particular zoning and, and start digging for uh, uh, definitions. That's just a suggestion. Yep. No, there's, there are definitely inconsistencies throughout, um, you know, because it's a document where stuff has been added on, added on, added on. Um, which is kind of why I wanted to have this process be a wholesale, I don't want to say rewrite, but looking at the entire thing rather than throwing in an additional segment on top of what we already have, just so we can get it more consistent and, and more tight. Um, so definitely regarding the definitions, there should be a, a single definition for each concept and not use different wording for that concept there's no doubt about it so when you are when you're looking through your groups sections if you notice any inconsistencies there or missing definitions um i, I would say go ahead and just throw down a definition mm -hmm. throw one down and then it's it's down and it can always be modified you know we can always look at other ordinances to see if there's an aspect of the definition that we missed but to my way of thinking, it's better to have a draft copy of something rather than just a notation saying we need this. Um, so, so Tim and I were just given it a start to look at a couple definitions that would apply in the commercial industrial and uh, got a couple proposals that we're looking at. I mean, so then would the thought process be, we agree on what we want to finalize. We send that out to the group you guys input on are these the definitions we go forward with and is that what everybody's thinking and then go from there i mean how do we keep everybody in the loop and not just have tim and i going in one direction and don and somebody else going in another direction and how do we bring it all together my thought on that is that in our various groups, we're going to be building on the conversations that we've already had as a, as a full group, even though that was a little while ago. Um, and then, yeah, once you have compiled all the stuff that you think needs to be added, subtracted, or changed, that um, it should be circulated back out to the whole group for, for comments and questions. The way to the whole thing is the whole section is done. Don't do it piecemeal. I would think that would be the best way to go about it, yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I think we're going to start getting confused about if if we're reading the industrial commercial, we can all kind of get our brains dialed in to that specific aspect of it, as opposed to during the course of one month, getting drip fed from all five different zoning designations and getting confused. I guess the only part I was thinking about were the definitions and if any of the definitions overlap into other sections, would it be good to get all on the same page around the definitions before we got into the other stuff? Got it. Maybe they're maybe they're specific to each zone and it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, I guess 
I, I completely understand what you're saying. And if we do end up wanting to have like a vastly different definition for what constitutes a gas station in the industrial commercial versus Hamlet commercial, uh, we're going to need to figure out a strategy to do that. And, and that, that might be the sort of thing where we keep a very broad definition of just using gas station as an example. We keep a very broad definition, but then we have a separate section outlining the regulations per area. Okay. So you could say a gas station is just a retail establishment that sells um, gasoline and diesel fuel with a possible indoor retail space repair shop or and then you know in the hamlet commercial you could say you want to limit it to three pumps or you know whatever and in, in the industrial it could be a truck stop that's where that's where a broader section would come into play uh, uh rob yeah i'm looking at uh section 612 has yeah. to do with all-terrain vehicles, racetracks, and so forth. And the definitions are quite general here. I wonder if we ought to be more detailed, like an all-terrain vehicle. It could be anything from a big GMC four-wheel drive pickup down to a little, you know, little all-terrain vehicle that goes 10 miles an hour. Yeah, I think that that's a, that's a really good example of a section where mm -hmm. things are very, very vague and they need to be um, quite a lot more specific and that's also a section that I feel um, depending on what right now we have a very vague definition for everything in 612 and we have a huge area of town where it's permitted under a special use mm -hmm. so that leads to what we saw last spring where mm -hmm. you get an applicant with a lot of ideas and a whole lot of gray area and wishy-washy for the planning board to try to make a ruling on. And that's exactly the sort of thing we want to avoid. We want to make it so that as much as possible, every party has a firm understanding of what's allowed where and why. Right. And um, getting a lot more specific with the definitions in that section, and then also getting specific with allowable areas um, because it's all well and good in text to say that it has to be a thousand foot buffer but as we found out last spring a thousand feet can be a very different thing if you're a thousand feet with a hundred foot hill between you and the next home it's a very different thing than if you're on top of the hill and you're a thousand feet from the homes below you uh, when it comes to noise and mm -hmm. stuff Right. Yeah, noise. And another uh, two words here are under racetrack course or skills or stunts. Right. Now, that could involve a lot of things with, with big vehicles, small vehicles, motorcycles. Yeah. Uh, I think that should be uh, more detail and definition of what a skill or a stunt is on a racetrack. I completely agree. Yeah, I think that that section is one that merits a whole lot of fine tooth uh, inspection. And, and I would even go so far as to say that, um, you know, we, we might want to get more specific with the allowable areas for that mm -hmm. sort of use. Because, you know, you can say a thousand feet, a thousand feet rules out an awful lot of our town. Um, but then if you have a place where you have just a thousand feet, you know, a little sliver of land that, that meets that requirement, it to me becomes a, a really clunky regulation, okay? Because the, the landowner is going to, the applicant is going to think one thing, well, we've got a thousand feet, look, I draw the lines. And then the adjacent property owners are going to say, yeah, but you know, they're going to spill out. And then how are we going to enforce that? It would be much better in my point of view that if you were doing the sort of operation that really merited that thousand feet to actually pick out some parcels that, that fit that criteria and say, this is allowable under a special use permit here, rather than just say it's allowable everywhere with this thousand foot stipulation. 
Um, it's one of those ones where it, 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 I'm sure it seemed fine when it was written. And if I was there helping write that, I'm sure it would seem fine to me. But now in practice, we see a thousand feet mm -hmm. leaves an awful lot of gray area for different interpretations. Yeah, the, and the noise, the noise factor would be huge in that, in yeah. that particular 612 group, too. Yep, yep. and, and um, you know, obviously the 1,000 feet is designed to mitigate the noise, but straight up distance is probably one of the less relevant aspects of mitigating noise. Mm -hmm. So you really got to look at what it is that you're trying to, to regulate and try to figure out the most straightforward and fair way to, to go about that. Okay, so this is an area we want to look at quite closely. I think. Big time, yep. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that one that one is in the, the rural ag uh, designation. So there's there's going to be a fair amount of these in the rural ag that that really require a lot of close inspection um, mm -hmm. because that's the area where. It includes most of the town and because of agriculture and everything, it, it just it kind of has the broadest oddball things that may or may not be able, allowed in it. So wherein you take the Hamlet commercial, it's pretty tight on, we allow this, we don't allow that. In the rural ag and the ag res, what we have right now, it's kind of, there's a whole lot of things under the special use permit um, that might be allowed or might be allowed with criteria and it'd be nice to tighten some of that up. That'll probably involve a lot of us working together and passing that one around. Yeah, that's the one that I'm trying to put most of my um, energy into. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's, you know, I don't want to say it's the most important. I just it is probably the most complicated. Of yeah, the, definitely. Or, or maybe not even complicated, but maybe the the most sprawling of, of all the designations. And it may. Well, you want to try and consider everything. Look what we went through this summer. That was a good example of why we need to spend the time. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I guess that's kind of my strategy on it. Unfortunately. I haven't been able to put in as much work on on it as I wanted to. Um, but I'm hoping to stop it. Get down, and, you know, get get some hours logged on it where I can be single minded. Single minded is a difficulty for me. Yeah. With the kids yeah. being home 24 seven, it's uh, <laughs> I got to do everything in 30 second increments. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have more? So do we want to just, um, you know, everybody uh, set up times with their their groups to see if we can get this thing uh, rolling? What do you, you know, what do you think and anyone think for a time frame that you want to, you know, to, to we can come back together and, and or start passing stuff around? Anyone have any thoughts on length of time? I would think two months to you know really bite into it with our groups and a couple months. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. A couple of months. See what we come up with at that point, and then go on from there. Take February, yeah. and the half of March, and um, kind of come back around and see where we're at. And you know, yeah. of course, we can all communicate over email. So you know, if people are struggling a little bit more or whatever, the you know, we can be dynamic about it. All right. Does anyone else have any questions? Does everyone my, understand my, better? Hmm? My only question is, I mean, should we keep our monthly meetings even if we don't have any land use decisions or whatever to make? Just as yeah. like in February, we'd have a checkpoint to say, hey, how's it going? Does anybody have any problems? I mean, so are we, are we saying if there's no issues, we don't meet again until March, or should we keep the February meeting on the books in case we want to check back in? I would, 
I would like to keep meeting. And then Rob, with this Zoom that you have, are there breakout rooms? I was in a, a, a Zoom meeting the other night and we were all in different breakout rooms. Yeah, we can do breakout rooms. I don't know how to do it, but I can find out. <laughs> I can't do it right this second, but I can I can find out for next time. Or I could research it too. And, but I didn't know what level of Zoom you have, but I really enjoyed the breakout rooms because then yeah. it would be just like me and Deb for an hour or whatever. Right. Yep. No, I think that sounds good. Um, I'll look into that and, and find out. I We just have the entry level, but. Um, I, I'd be willing to look into it and get back to you within the week, unless you want to do it. No, that's fine. If, if <laughs> I'm not going to turn Squeeze that. Squeeze it in that 30 second interval. <laughs> Yeah. Lisa, if you have problems with that, we do it at my work all the time. Uh, oh, my boss okay. knows how to do it. So if you have okay. problems with that, I can ask him too. So Okay, great. Okay. Okay. And it's en entry level Zoom that we have, Rob? Yeah, I don't know what they call it. It's whatever the lowest paid tier is. Um, okay. But if we need I think it's know. just timed is all is like the limiting factor to it or something like that. I think we can only get like 45 minutes or something, oh, I think, which is probably good enough. Yeah. for sit downs, right. you know. I mean, if we need to upgrade, that shouldn't be that big of a deal either. If, you know, it's it's to my way of looking at it for a monthly fee for a couple of months, if that's helping the productivity, that's well worth it. I mean, most towns do this stuff with a with a contractor, a consultant, and it costs thirty, forty thousand dollars. So right. Um, yeah, and fifteen dollars to get breakout rooms on Zoom. I don't think the town board would have a problem with that. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll get back to you. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Yep, no Does anyone else have anything else to add or discuss? Everybody feel more comfortable with moving forward with their sections. I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, I still have to make dinner. <laughs> it was early this morning, so. Um, what do you have? It will be over. Yeah. Um. <laughs> actually, liver. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's what Russ wants. Okay. <laughs> as long as you got onions. My son. Yeah, liver, onions, bacon, mashed potatoes, and spinach. There you go. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. High in iron. Okay, um, we have a vote for uh, ending the meeting or a motion to end the meeting. We're all moved to close. I can second. second it. Okay, then uh, well, let's get together with our individual in uh, people in our groups and um, and go forward and we'll meet next month. So all, was, all are in favor of, of ending the meeting? Aye. 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 Yes. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Rob. <laughs>